Here I'm going to choose a reasonably simple looking vector v depending on coordinates x, y and z and go through the straightforward exercises of finding the divergence and the curl of the vector v. First of all let's remind ourselves how we write those. Both the divergence and the curl use the grad operator or del operator. It looks like the upside down delta and it's a vector. If we take the dot product with v that's the divergence of v. On the other hand if we take the cross product that's the curl of v. Remember a dot product is a scalar quantity while a vector product is a vector quantity. Let's choose a not too complicated v. Let's take v to be say x squared y i plus x y cubed j plus y sine z k. I want to work out the divergence and the curl of this v. Case 1, the divergence. That's del dot v. And remember that del is the vector containing the three partial derivatives as its components. And we've got to dot that with v. So using the standard definition of the dot or scalar product, that's d by dx acting on the first component of v plus d by dy acting on the second component plus d by dz acting on the third component. And we add those up and we get a scalar quantity. There's no vectors anywhere here now. No i's, j's and k's. If we do the derivatives we get 2xy plus 3xy squared and differentiating sign remember we get minus cos. That's the divergence. It's finished. Now what about the curl? The curl is a cross product and so we have to make a determinant. Put i, j, k across the top. We put the components of the del operator. Remember I often make those look a little bit less cumbersome by just using the suffix x, y and z just to make a bit more room in the determinant. And then we need the components of v. x squared y, x, y cubed and y sine z. Okay, so now we expand the determinant and we'll get something multiplied by i and we have to alternate the sign, so a minus something multiplied by j and then plus something multiplied by k. For the i part we get d by dy acting on y sine z differentiating y sine z with respect to y gives just sine z. Then we need minus d by dz acting on x, y cubed. But there's no z there so that's just minus zero. So that's the i part. Just so it doesn't get too confused let's delete those arrows. And now do the j part. For the j part we need d by dx acting on y sine z, but there's no x there so that's 0. And for the k, so no, we, sorry, we haven't finished the j part, we also need minus d by dz acting on x squared y, so that's also 0, because there's no z there. Once 
again, let's delete those arrows carefully. And that leaves us the k term. So now we need d by dx acting on xy cubed. That's going to be y cubed. And we need minus d by dy acting on x squared y. So that's minus x squared. Just for tidiness, let's get rid of the arrows one last time. And that just leaves us to simplify the quantity, which is the curl, to get sine z i no j plus y cubed minus x squared k. That was the curl of v. It's the combination of the cross product structure along with the differentiations. It's not really very hard. The only thing that can make it awkward is if the v is complicated.